Well, hello everyone. So last video, we talked about how to use assembly programming to control a serial port of a personal computer and make it output a pulse width modulation signal. But, there wasn't any way to really control the pulse width modulation signal output. Once we started the program, it just ran at the same pulse width no matter what we did. So today, we're going to look at controlling the pulse width modulation output and changing its value using the keyboard. Okay, so I, <clears throat> excuse me. So our setup is the same from the last video, except the only thing that's really changed is the programming. So over here, the gate drive board that still is receiving its signal from the computer serial port still goes to the same IGBT, same gate drive power supply, monitoring with the oscilloscope, and output just goes to the flashlight. So. I'll show you the new program I wrote and its operation first. So I'll we'll start this. Alright. Okay. So it starts off initially, and this is a pulse width. But, as I said, we can control it using the keyboard. So I'll press a different key for you. That's number eight. That's number seven. That's number six. There's five, four, three, two, and one is the highest pulse width. We can change the value anytime we want. We press nine again, it goes back to the value of nine. There's six. There's one again. And this time, we have a properly written exit code. If you're using DOS, you can just press escape and it just closes. Alright, so let's try that again so you can see the light this time. So once again, it starts at 9. That's the lowest pulse width it can go. Then we'll go to 8. There's 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And jump back to 9. And if I press escape, it stops the program and it turns off altogether. Okay, so to see how this works, to see how we can control the pulse width using the number keys on the keyboard, we have to once again jump into the assembly code and see what's going on. Okay, so let's see. That's a little bit... Uh, Okay, so the first part here is actually just code written for if you wanted to boot it from a floppy, so we're not going to get into that just yet. That'll be another video. So the code actually starts right here. Right here. So we, just like our old code, we are using the CX counter, so CX is going to count the program for us and see how many times it's looped through. So it's just like just a loop just like the other one that we did in the previous video. And the base register this time is going to be used to hold the value. And BX is going to be copied to AX. You'll understand more about that in a minute. Same as the other one. Move DX to the 0x3F8. That's the serial port out DX and AL, increment CX just like last time, compare CX, see if it's all the way up to its highest value, and if it is, jump to the key. So this time we have a subroutine or a routine for reading the keyboard. So if it's not at its highest value yet, jump to the start here and repeat. So once it gets to the key routine, this is where things get interesting. So the first part of this key routine from push to pop is a routine that pretty much invalidates the keyboard's buffer. So if you don't tell the computer to specifically clear the keyboard's buffer and you press a key, the buffer will just keep filling up because if you don't tell it to empty the buffer, it doesn't really have anywhere else to go and then pretty soon all your keystrokes, the computer won't read them anymore. So this is kind of an interesting trick here, which 
invalidates the keyboard's buffer. It sets the start of the buffer to the same value as the end of the buffer, so not don't really need to go too much into that. After we get to the after we get past that, where we clear out the keyboard's buffer, we reset the counter to zero. Because remember, if we got if we got to key in the first place, then that means our value is as high as it could be. So we need to reset it to zero and reset the AL register. Now, in AL 0x060, that will take a key, keystroke in the, the keyboard scan code and put it into the AL register. So 0x060 is the address for the keyboard. So we'll take a value in from 0x060 of the keyboard and put it in AL. Now we have to compare AL. So compare the value of AL to 0x001. Now 0x001 is the escape key. So if we press escape, jump equals close. The next one is compare AL to 0x002. So 0x002 is actually the value of 1. So if it is, go to L1. And then so on, compare AL to 0x003. If so, jump equals L2. And it has all these L's, which stand for levels, down to 9. So that's where we get our control from. It just goes from key 1 to key 9, key 1 being 0x002, key 9 being 0x00a, and for each different key that we press, it goes to a different level. So these level routines, what do they do? So we'll start with L1. So if we got to L1, then that means that we pressed the 1 key. So that XOR is BX and BX, that clears out the BX. So that's going to set the pulse width as high as it can be. So if we, we press 1, BX is going to go all the way to 0, the pulse width is going to be high, and the light's going to be very bright. And then L2, instead of making BX 0, we want it to be a little bit dimmer, we move it to 0X80. So if you're, if you're wondering why we didn't set L2 to 0x001, not every hex or binary value increases the pulse width in a linear fashion. It adds additional pulses in with additional spaces in, and it, it doesn't make a clean pulse width output. So L3, again, if we press 3, we'll get to L3, and we'll get to 0xc0. So at the end of all of these loops, what all we're really doing is we're changing the value of the BX counter and then we're jumping back to the start. So with our new value of BX, BX gets put into AX and AX gets put out on the serial port. So it's, it's, it's pretty easy to understand if you already understand assembly language this much. It's just getting the value of BX right because as I said not every one of these hex or binary values outputs a clean pulse width. So we so level 2 is 8-0, level 3 C0, and then so on, 4 is U0, 5 is F0, 6 is F8, 7 is FC, 8 is FE, and then finally 9 is the lowest pulse width that you can have, and its value is 0XFF, and it jumps to the start. This is a close routine, this only works in DOS, if you've booted this from a floppy, you're not really going to be able to exit anywhere, but just in case if you were curious and wanted to run it from DOS, move AH to 4CH and interrupt 21H, that just X's back to DOS. So then we go to the top, back to start, so once you've pressed your key, you've selected what you want BX to be, then the start routine, again, it copies the value of BX to AX, and so whatever value that you put in BX from your different key presses, if you pressed key 1, it's going to put a value of FF in there. No, sorry, that'd be zero, 00. It's going to put the value of zero, 00 in there. Anyways, it's the brightest, you know what I mean. It's going to put the brightest value from BX into AX, and we're going to put AX, or half of it anyway, AL should change that. It's going to put it out to the serial port. And then if you press 2, it's going to go, you know, the next value, dimmest value, and so on and so on. And it keeps doing that. But it loops through this main program first. 
until the CX counter comes up. And every time the CX counter comes up, it goes back to the key routine and checks it again. So it doesn't check it every time it loops around, just once the CX gets to the four Fs. So you might think that would take a long time to check the key press only once the counter counted all the way up to four Fs. But as you can see, if I run the program now and I press escape, it's pretty much it immediately stops. And any time I press any of the keys, it immediately changes values. That's just because the processor in this computer is actually so fast. And actually, in, you know, in today's standards, it's actually pretty slow because this is actually like a Pentium 2, like 300 megahertz or something like that. So it's pretty interesting to see just how fast these computers are when they're running something simple written in assembly code, even on DOS. Okay, so just a bonus for you guys today. I have a computer here that has the old floppy drive in it, so I've put it, the program I've just written, onto the floppy disk and put it in. We're going to see if it works. So there's no DOS or anything at all happening here. It's just that program. So I'll show you what happens here. Turn it on. Just got to go through the uh, post check, you know. Just going to let it do that. All right, and there's that old sound. And, you know. So it looks a little bit fuzzy on the oscilloscope, but that's actually because this program is running a lot faster now that it doesn't have DOS to deal with. So let's take a look in here. I think the serial port's a little bit messed up on this computer, but it still works. So it starts at the same value. Let's, let's make it a little bit brighter. There you go. That was one. We'll go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So as you can see, it does work. But yeah, I think something's up with that. But I'll show you what happens here. If you press escape to stop the program, it still stops, but computer still does it and doesn't really do much of anything it does nothing and like I said not really a point to having an exit code if you're just booting this up from a floppy well, the camera does not like that does it so anyways yeah at this point you would just whatever control alt, delete or just turn off the computer so we're just going to turn it off well guys that's going to do it for this one I will be making a few other videos regarding assembly programming and the serial port pulse width modulation because there are a couple other interesting things that you can still do with the programming to make it do some actually pretty useful things with that serial port. Stuff that we've been doing here is just kind of still playing around but there's a couple of things that you can actually use to make these old computers actually useful for something besides just collecting dust. So. Just like with the other video, I will put the source code in the description if you want to play with it. You're free to play with it. Just be careful about running it on a computer that you need to use every day. Like I said before, might want to run it through an emulator first, or if you do have an old computer collecting dust somewhere, I'd try it on that first. So anyways guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.